Hey everybody, my name is Flobja, and welcome back to Batman Arkham Asylum. Welcome to the character bios. Da -da -da -da. So yeah, in the last episode we completed the story, had a very disappointing boss battle. And watched the credits for a shit ass long time. <laughs> Which I'm probably gonna cut like a few pieces out of it, or maybe Completed 84%? Just... Yeah, because the challenges are also... We're gonna cover that, but... Not you. <laughs> it's like you beat the game, but not really. Like, we complete the game with all the trophies and all the shit. We have the riddles, upgrades, character bios, but yeah. But let's check the character bios. Let's start with the big man himself. Batman. When his parents were cut down in front of him, young Bruce Wayne resolved to rid Gotham City of the criminal element that took their lives. He trained extensively to achieve mental and physical perfection. In addition to mastering martial arts, detective techniques, and criminal psychology, dressing as a pet to prey on criminals' fears, Batman fights crime with the aid of specialized gadgets and vehicles, operating out of the secret Batcave below Wayne Manor. This cave is not really aerodynamic. Hmm? The cave not really aerodynamic. No, no. Let's see. So his real name, Bruce Wayne. He is a CEO slash philanthropist. Eyes, Gotham City. Base of operations, blue. Hair, 2010, uh, I don't know what is this. Bounce. Lights. Uh, hate, detective comics, 27. Ah, yes. <laughs> First appearance, Gotham City. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Technically. So here we have his attributes, which is mostly the most Sexy, fantasy. not there. So, his powers <laughs> and abilities. Trained to physical and mental peak, so he is like peak human performance. And I believe in the comics he can like out one a fucking moving car. <laughs> uh, arsenal of catches, vehicles, and advanced technology. Inventor, detective, genius level intelligence. Did you think that Batman have a good graphic card? Because <laughs> nah, he, he couldn't buy it. <laughs> they were out of out of uh, stock. <laughs> Expert in most known forms of martial arts, for example, League of Legends. Ah, yes. Train it! <laughs> for, example, for example, making sure that the enemies do not walk everywhere again. Yeah. Changing all aspects of criminology. Mastery of the physical sciences. Physical Compu sciences, like sciences. I mean, every science is physical. Any science is digital. I mean, yeah, I get. <laughs> he's also a computer expert. <laughs> oh, he has a. He has the editing device. Card. Master of disguise. So basically, he puts on like a mustache and then it's like, Are you Batman? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm uh, not Batman. Photographic memory. Master of playing, basically. Yeah. Trained in stealth and espionage techniques. And an es expert escape artist. Explain me why this guy mm -hmm. not and not suspicious for anybody to be Batman. <laughs> I mean, one multimillionaire that have uh, one company with I think like military in, equipment and blah blah blah. Uh, I believe like in some comics, like um, I believe the Riddler once found out that Bruce Wayne was Batman, but it. Um, the Riddler found that answer too simple, and he was like, no, it can't be. So he's like in denial. Joker doesn't want to know. And other villains like are like, they want to keep it to themselves for like personal reasons. Okay. So some have figured it out, some have not. Mm -hmm. But let's do Joker now. An insanely homicidal supervillain. The Joker's white skin, green hair, and blood red lips. Belied the chaotic nature underlying his cartoonish appearance. The self-styled clown prince of crime has no superpowers beyond the capacity for incredible violence and the skill at creating deadly mayhem. He frequently concocts elaborate schemes to entrap his arch nemesis, Batman. I like the button that say facts. <laughs> go, facts. Go, go back. Oh, you, you read all of this and you can press square to say facts. Facts. Real name? Unknown. Occupation? Professional criminal. <laughs> I don't think that's a job. <laughs> well, 
His eyes are green, hair is green, and we don't really care about his height and weight. Weg even als het green, it's a pain, dude. But his first it's appearance, black. Batman won. And fun little thing, he was supposed to die in his first appearance. Because the creators were like, no one's gonna like repeating characters. And now look at comics, full of repeating characters. Yeah. <laughs> so, unrepentant homicidal maniac, albeit without a precise psychological diagnosis. So he has like no mental illness linked to him. Surprisingly strong hand to hand combatant. No, we see. That <laughs> we saw what he could. Yeah. <laughs> I go to transform myself in a titan. But Step you twice and then yeah. I leave. His past is unknown. Conflicting unconfirmed reports state that he was a fair comedian, a petty thief, and a broken family man. Employs various deadly weapons, often based on party cake items. No. In this game, no? I mean, he had a few. Frequently he uses a toxin that stretches victim's face into a joker like Quinn and causes death. Okay. How many characters there are? A bunch. Maybe we need to go... We need to go faster. Okay. Yeah. Let's do one shot. Crazy Sharp has been running Arkham Asylum for the past three years and has dedicated his life to restoring to, to sanity to so-called super villains that play Column City. He is currently campaigning to become the next mayor of Cotton. To facilitate this campaign, he has instigated stringent, that's a word, new security and experimental research policies at Arkham, which um, was very successful. So, yeah. Intense dedication to cleaning up Arkham. Well, we found out that, that we, we are really cleaning. Yeah, and also involves murdering everyone. Humbles and old fashioned in demeanor, while they focus on his own political aspirations. Contempt for Arkham inmates and disinterest in the specifics of the treatment mask, a cowardly nature. Why does he have a. Alright, oh, but whatever. He has been working at Arkham for 8 years. He has twice been suspended for drinking on a job, and regularly holds poker evenings on the card rooms. Frank is desperate to be top dog at Arkham. He feels to recognize that he is considered untrustworthy and generally disliked. Who the fuck is this guy? Um, he was the guy in the beginning that um, set everything up. Yeah. Uh, he's the guy in the chair that like had a smile on his face. Yeah. Remember him? So I can believe that he is the best card in Arkham Asylum. Well, you died. Who is a sarcasm to cover up insecurities and failures? Violent tempers result in many injuries to patients. I mean, it's kind of necessary. All right, more interesting people. Born with a rare mutation that made his skin green and scaly and grew his body to grotesque proportions, Waylon Jones has raised by an, was raised by an alcoholic aunt and bullied relentlessly for his appearance. He previously worked as a carnival freak under the name Killer Quark. But his misanthropy grew as did his peaceful nature, pushing him to lead a life of crime. As his physical condition and mental state deteriorate, Killer Quark becomes a more peaceful foe, increasingly detached from humanity. So let's see, and fucking el 11 feet, that's fucking big. Killer Quark has incredibly thick, tough skin and razor sharp teeth and claws. An expert wrestler, really? I mean, okay. His strength and stamina are at near superhuman level. Highland senses and extremely fast reflexes, but he couldn't touch a pelerang. <laughs> Able to survive in water for extended periods of time. An intense hatred of humanity. Same. Fucked. <laughs> Why we got Harley Quinn? An Arkham Asylum psychiatrist assigned to treat the Joker. Dr. Harley Quinzel instead became obses obsessively fixated on a patient, believing herself to be in love with him. She helped him escape confinement and took on her own criminal identi ident uh, identity as Harley Quinn. Quinn is a violent and unpredictable felon whose only motivation beyond general mayhem is achieving the Joker's approval. Because of his cruel and mercurial nature, this in some ways makes her just another of his victims, albeit a very dangerous one. I love it when they use words that I do not know what they mean. Like mercurial and choker and tuh. <laughs> so she was a doctor, professional criminal again. Let's see. Surprising strength and stamina. Superior gymnastic skills, total disregard for human life. Like the Joker, she's homicidal psychotic who escapes 
easy classification. So again, there's nothing really linked to her. But I feel like Stockholm Syndrome would fit well. Superior gymnastic skills? It's like... Ooh, the microphone. Oh no. Sorry. The superior gymnastic skills is like... I go to the gym, but not like you. Stupid human. I'm superior. No? <laughs> no? Uh, gymnastics is like the way she jumps and all. So he, she go to the gym, jumps around a bit, and it's like, ha! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. But in the superior form, like, yeah. On top of the buildings and. Yeah, yeah, you got it. All right, the penguin. Penguin, one of Batman's oldest foes, is an eccentric criminal mastermind, known as much for his love of ornithology and trick umbrellas as for his shady business dealings. Uh, for information, ornithology is, I believe, the study of birds. Uh, Cotton's popular iceberg launch serves as couple pots front of num for a number of illegal financial activities that fund much of the city's underworld. Just despite his short stature, the penguin is, will is a wily foe whose umbrellas conceal a fair variety of deadly weapons and gadgets. So Oswald, Chesterfield, couple pot. A restaurateur and racketeer. Criminal and financial ma mastermind. Expert hand to hand combatant. <laughs> sure. <Yeah>, sure. <laughs> this fucking tiny dude. To well, he hit you always in your bars, so. That's why he's a master. <laughs> Expert, sorry. Driven by a need to prove himself in spite of his comical appearance. So. Employs various weapons, many based on umbrellas and birds. What? Umbrellas and birds? Birds are a weapon? No, he... At least in some, fair, in some forms of media, he has like bombs attached to penguins or something. <laughs> it's, uh... like, it's like that. I do like how um, all of Batman films... Uh... Okay. I do like how all of Batman films stick with the team. Uh... Uh... My Two-Face. One of my favorites. District Attorney Harvey Dent was one of Batman's strongest allies in Gotham City, until a criminal tore acid in Dent's face, hideously scarring him. The wounds fractured his psyche, and he was reborn as a schizoid criminal mastermind, obsessed with duality. His former good luck charm, a two-headed trick silver dollar, was damaged on one side in the attack, and Dent has seized on, on it as a reflection of his half-scarred visage. He flips it to decide the fates of his victims, Despite Batman's efforts to reform his former ally, Dent is consumed by his fixation on chance, and his crimes are designed to prove out his diametric philosophy. How many money do you think that cost this suite? Yeah, that has to be like specially tailored. So he's, again, professional criminal. I think we're going to see that a lot. He lists his card on the left half of his face, which he plays up with clothing that's the finished style on one side, which I fucking love. Extremely skilled with his weapon of choice, twin 45 automatics. Psychotic obsession with duality, designing crimes around the number 2. The first to his half card coin in choice of life or death. So basically, he flips his coin, and if you get a bad half. Prometheus, one that I'm not really familiar with. A dark reflection of Batman. Prometheus was raised by criminals who were gunned down by policemen right in front of him. So it's like, it's really the opposite of Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Dedicating his life to destroying the law. <laughs> so, Prometheus traveled the world and trained in the ways of murder. <laughs> so um, how do I murder a man? Uh, you stab him right here. Oh. <laughs> Clad in an armored suit that maximizes his natural skills, he is a master assassin whose physical and mental abilities rival Batman's own. <laughs> so stupid. But why have a spark in his war? <laughs> because why not? Again, <laughs> professional criminal. <laughs> he has white hair. Hey, white. Eyes brown, are you sure? Yeah, I don't know. Pathological need to kill law officers. <laughs> okay. So he needs to kill them. But officers need to be officers, especially. Can be, I don't know, a cooker. No, no, no. Need to be officers. Yeah, police. 
trained to speak his physical and mental levels. So basically Batman, Arsenal of Weapons and Deadly Gadgets. Okay, that was a good one. Ah yes, the Great White Shark. I actually like this one. A crooked financier who stole millions of dollars, Warren White, thought he'd scored a legal victory when his insanity plea went through. But when he got to Arkham Asylum, he realized his mistake. Driven insane by the other inmates, he was also disfigured by an encounter with Mr. Freeze that left him without hair, a nose, ears or lips. Calling himself the Great White Shark, he filed his teeth into fangs to more perfectly resemble his new na namesake. Putting his financial skills to use, he has become a major player in Gotham's underground crime scene, running a number of records from his cell in Arkham. Okay. So I like that he tried to get like away from normal prison to go to with an insanity plea, went yeah. to Arkham and actually went insane. So professional criminal, eyes brown, hair none. Let's see. Brilliant financial skills which he uses for a variety of criminal purposes. Scarred visage that makes him resemble a shark. Never seen a shark with legs, but okay. okay. Teeth sharpened to points. Ah, the ventriloquist, he's an interesting character. <laughs> Look at the dude. Greatest Batman villain ever. <laughs> Arnold Wesker was a timid orphan whose deep repression erupted in a barroom brawl, resulting in him being sent to Blackgate Prison. There he encountered the puppet Scarface and promptly murdered the man who had carved the puppet. The two are now inseparable, with Scarface directing a series of criminal activities. While most believe that Wesker is simply acting out a second personality to the puppet, Wesker seems himself as a reluctant lackey who merely does his puppet's bidding. And the power of the guy is... <laughs> Fix! <laughs> Delusional schizophrenic. <laughs> wow! <laughs> with multiple personality disorder. What a power. Obsessed with his puppet, Scarface, whom he properties with unsettling skill. When team for Scarface, the two operates as a criminal mastermind. And I kinda like how... And the guy is a character in the Batman series. Yeah. And I really like him. He's not like the most intimidating character. But... But he can be scary from time to time. DC have enough money to survive or they need to create something really fast in 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when did he... Uh... 1988, so that's actually pretty late. But I think that was the time when they were like, alright, let's pump out a bunch of new characters. Yeah. But I kind of like the idea of um, how the ventriloquist, like, he puppeteers a puppet. But in fact, it's like the puppet that's puppeteering him. Oh. So he himself is the puppet for the puppet. It's an interesting idea. Yeah. And I kind of like that. In the... It's the one series. The team from the creator of Futurama. Matt Craning? The whole team of Futurama. Okay. And uh, I don't remember the name. Desenchant, maybe? Uh, Desenchantment, yeah. Happened something like that. I don't remember that. Uh, I've seen a show, but I... How many seasons did you see? Like three? Okay, at the end of the three, I think. It's been a while. Maybe it's four seasons, I don't know. Mm. Alright, Hugo Strange. First gaining fame as a psychiatrist who declared that he had fully analyzed the Dark Knight from afar, Professor Hugo Strange lent credence to his own claims by deducing Batman's true identity as Bruce Wayne. However, his interest in the Batman turned into a deranged obsession, and he used his medical expertise to hatch a series of bizarre blots based around genetics and mind control in order to feed the Batman, and possibly take his place. Strange's fragile mental state has left him with intermittent knowledge of Batman's true identity. A fact that hangs over Bruce Wayne's head. For, it's strange every, for if Strange ever snaps completely, Batman's greatest secret might be revealed. So instead of Doctor Strange, we have Professor Strange. Yeah. Right. Gotta, gotta dodge the copyright. Okay. <laughs> he is a psychiatrist. Here? None. <laughs> <laughs> Trained to... Uh, physical perfection? Really? Really? I mean, okay, that's definitely not what, what he is in um, the second game. Brilliant psycho psychological analyst. Alright, yeah. Extensive knowledge of genetics. Obsessed with Batman and Batman's secret identity. He just has a crush. He's in love. 
plagued by schizophrenic episodes that leave him confused and dangerous. I believe this whole character biography gets like wet guns in like the second game. <laughs> Man, it's a lot of characters. <laughs> we make this a two part, I think. Following the suspicious death of his multimillionaire parents in a fire, Roman Sianus inherited their fortune and then went on to bankrupt their company. Good job! Saved by a buyout by Bruce Wayne, Sianus came to re resent and hate Wayne. Fixated on the concept of mouse, Sianus carved one from his father's black coffin and sought revenge. Jesus, dude. His ensuing battle with the Dark Knight caused his mask to be burnt into his skin, remaking him as the Black Mask. Sianus is now a feared gang leader and one of the most powerful mob bosses in Gotham, with a burning hatred of the Batman. So yeah. <laughs> Which then begs the question, why was his mask in the office of Dr. Young? My question is why the superpowers of these guys are guns? He is I'm his powers. I'm obsessed with and I have guns, I'm a billion. <laughs> He's obsessed with masks. <laughs> That's his first power. Harbors the hatred of Batman and Bruce Wayne. Well, lucky for you, it's the same person. Face resembles a black skull. Really? <laughs> Didn't notice. Feared and powerful mob boss, skilled marksman, known for his double handguns. So he's like a regular guy. Calendar man. Calendar man. <laughs> Look at the sound Really? Calendar man. Oh, this is one of the... We have a Spider-Man, a Iron Man, and we have Thor. Thor man. <laughs> we have Batman. We have Superman. And Calendar and the man. <laughs> His superpower is... I know the days. Basically! <laughs> fixated on the calendar. Julian Day, of course that's his name. It's like July and Day in one. <laughs> Became Calendar Man, a villain who timed and tied his crimes thematically to certain holidays throughout the year, often leaving clues by which he could be caught. Gotham City's hopes for a day of off are often clouded by the knowledge that any holiday of note is likely to be shadowed by Calendar Man's presence. So if it's St. Patrick's Day, and the people kill you. don't know why DC have less money than Marvel. Man, <laughs> calendar man. Hey, Marvel also has some stupid characters like Wall Man. Yeah, Wall Man. Wall Man. It's just a living wall. Okay. So. It's a reference. Because in Wall Man, you put the calendar man on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like a villain duo. Obsessed with quirks of the calendar and carefully plans a team's crimes around the world. He's not a fucking criminal, he's just a crazy guy in yes! TikTok. But he murders people. In t it's a normal guy in TikTok. We made it to the second row. We got Bruce Wayne. <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> Born into a wealthy Wayne family, Bruce Wayne had an I idyllic childhood. Although he was given a strong sense of justice by his moralistic and philanthropic parents, Thomas and Martha, after their final murder at the hands of a mucker, Bruce dedicated his life to battling the criminal element that took their lives. But why? It doesn't matter. He has a coupon for a new pet. <laughs> it's expired, remember? Yeah. Ah, fuck. <laughs> he left Cotton for many years to train his mental and physical abilities across the globe, finally returning to take up the mantle of the Dark Knight. So, basically same as Batman. And this is literally the same as Batman, so I'm gonna just... Oracle! So, um, if you don't remember, this is like the person who was talking to us on the intercoms all the okay. time, helping us. So, with uh, <laughs> Professor Xavier, but without mind powers, and it's a girl. Yeah. And it's a young instead of old. Yeah. Okay. And she's like an expert hacker. He also was Batgirl for a moment. Uh, the daughter of Gotham City Police Commissioner James W. Gordon. Barbara Gordon was forbidden by her overprotective father from joining the GCPD. Instead, she took on the identity of Batgirl and was a crime-fighting partner of Batman for years, because that's less dangerous than joining the Gotham City Police Force. Uh, but that all ended when the Joker shot her through the spine, paralyzed from the waist down and confined to a wheelchair. Barbara adopted the new identity of Oracle, and now aids the Dark Knight with her computer expertise, providing Batman with a constant stream of information 
in the field to aid this battle against crime. Man, how easy is the life? Everybody say no because I didn't do anything this year, no because I need to go to the gym, no because I need finish my studies, no because my work is a shit. Man, this woman received a shot. A shot! <laughs> And, and ha now she needs to stay in the in a wheelchair, and she say, "Nah, I got to change my name. I got to be an expert of computers now, and I go to find the crime yeah. with my superpowers of the computers." Yeah, you know, she's got things figured out. Eidetic memory, almost total recall of everything she sees and reads. So that's like almost photographic memory. Extensive headquarters in Quantum City's clock tower, filled with information archives. And high level hacking and computer skills. Ah yes, Commissioner Corden. Police Commissioner James W. Corden dedicated his career to cleaning up the corruption in the Quantum City Police Department. A goal has, he has come a long way towards accomplishing. He has been equally tough on crime and in the pursuit of making Quantum City safe for all its citizens. Gordon has forged an uneasy alliance with Gotham's other top crime fighter, the Riddler, the mysterious vigilante known as Batman. You know something? Hair something white, curious? formerly brown. You know something curious? Gordon, mm -hmm. if you remove the N at the end in Spanish, it means fat. Gordo? Gordo, it's fat. It's also an enemy in Kirby. Okay. So. <laughs> Every time when, when I see the the film and people say, Where is Gordon? Where is Gordon? And my mind is one <laughs> police that is really fat and <laughs> Batman say, Haha, oh, you are you're fat <laughs> because in my mind was like that, but no no the name is Gordon. Okay. Gordon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He's an experienced police officer, trained criminologist, proficient in hand to hand fighting techniques, an expert marksman. And also he like a lot the macarons. <laughs> okay. He, he really likes the uh, sweets and brownies also, but don't say anything there. Ah, oh, Penelope Young. Is young or is old? It, I, uh, I think she's... Uh... <laughs> Many times can be young. <laughs> Penny Young was always a brilliant student who was prepared to do anything to advance professionally. Always a brilliant student, that's why he's young. Yeah. Because always it's a student. She has a young brain. Yeah. She has built up a reputation for being a cold, calculating woman, focused only on the project at hand. She was hired at Arkham Asylum by Warden Quincy Sharp to head up the Asylum Research Department and to finally restore the, the, to sanity the more range of Gotham City's supervillains. These supervillains that the superpower is used again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's just like. Don't use that. Nah, I'm cleared! <laughs> so, maybe you've noticed, but first appearance is this game. Some uh, other characters also had that, like Boyle and um, uh, Warner Sharp. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Graduate from Cotton University with top honors, dedicated to a pursuit of psychiatric cure for various forms of criminal insanity, highly focused on career and pensions, intolerant of people who get in the way of her work. Also, she created half of like the Titan formula and created fucking everything. Yeah, but not important because Back. it's a woman. Yeah. She can't create anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Ah, the Riddler. With an obsessive compulsive need for attention, Edward Nigma is determined to be the most outlandish of Gotham City's criminals. Concocting elaborate series of clues and riddles around his crimes, Batman has proven a worthy opponent capable of deducing the Riddler's plans. But Nygma is dedicated to creating a mystery the Dark Knight will not be able to solve in time. So, his actual name is Eddie Nashton. It's not even Edward Nygma. That's a later name. So, he's a genius intellect, driven by a need to test his wits against law enforcement by leaving clues to his planned crimes. And compulsive need for attention. The, the perfect, perfect TikToker. TikToker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the smartest. Sure you are. Ah, Catwoman. An orphan who learned to survive on Gotham City streets. Selina Kyle took to Tiffy to survive, but determined to do it in style. She learned martial arts and trained extensively to perfect her skills at cat burglary. <laughs> cat. 
A criminal activities are often tempered by reluctant altruism, making an inconstant, inconstant villain and occasional hero. She regularly eludes capture by the Dark Knight and maintains a complicated adversarial relationship with Batman that frequently turns flirtatious and occasionally legitimately romantic. This is the description of Twitter. <laughs> God, it's all social media here. This is pretty nice. That's actually nice. Professional thief. Okay, sure. But not a criminal. No. <laughs> thief. Uh, trained gymnast and athlete. Expert hand-to-hand combatment. Highly skilled with her specialized whip. A cat of nine tails. Of course, it's cat themed. Capable of astonishing stealth. Obsessed with and adept at stealing famous and well protected items. Drawn to cat motives. <laughs> no shit. And she liked the tea with ginger. But don't say anything there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure if that's like actual canon. I think you're making that up. No? No. Oh, okay. Are we like halfway there? Uh, one more. Can we have one insect? Yes. Killer mod. It's like a, a mod of Killer Croc. <laughs> we'll find out later. Alright. Bang. Oh my god, that's a picture. Oh no. We have a small. Uh, you know, we can just grab like a needle and do like. And then his, all his muscles will just deflate. Like. How <laughs> needs to be this guy masturbating himself? <laughs> needs to be really aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, how big is he even? Alright, so this is a Venom form, so he's like 6 feet 8. My god, he gains like more than double his weight with Venom. Well, imprisoned from birth to service, that father's sentence. God, that sucks. Now oh, your father died. Well, now you go to prison. <laughs> Pain was raised inside the horrific environs of a Santa Prisa prison. His only friend in the hello was a teddy bear he named Osito. God, these are like all Spanish names. I yeah. believe. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably butchering them. <laughs> Finding solace in smuggled books and meditation, he developed incredible powers of concentration. When he was subjected to military experiments using a steroid code named Venom, his iron forced will helped him survive when other test subjects had died. And he managed to escape. Determined to prove his worth, he sought out Batman and poked the Dark Knight's spine. But Batman recovered and managed to pass pain. Okay, imagine, like we just read about Barbara Gordon, okay. Oracle, how she broke her spine and she can't walk anymore. Batman is just walking again. How shitty must that feel? Superpowers. <laughs> uh, cutting off the precious famine supply that transformed pain into a superhuman. Yeah. Super criminal. Not superhuman. Professional criminal. Professional criminal, super criminal, super villain, professional criminal. All the same. He's a master strategist, intense focus, abnormally strong reaction to Venom, giving him incredibly enhanced physical abilities, determined to pass Batman and all others who challenge him. Wait, this guy appears in the film that I see. Yeah. This is a master strategist. His idea is I have bombs in the city. <laughs> yes. I go to destroy all this city because uh -huh. we have, I don't know what shit, down the city and I go to destroy it. Uh -huh. I'm in this city, I go to die also, but I go to destroy it with this phone. Okay, I go and destroy it hmm? by remote, but I go to stay here yeah. <laughs> with the phone yeah. to explode the city, this city that I'm here right now. Yeah. This is the master of yeah. the strategy. Okay. Yeah. To be fair, that movie also really sucks. Okay, because take one helicopter and explode it in the helicopter, not an uh, option. Oh. Okay. That's also like the same movie where um, Bane robs like a bank, escapes in the middle of the day, uh, goes into a t tunnel, middle of the day, and then he exits the tunnel in the middle of the night. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I understand because they start running in the tunnels and somebody say, Wait, okay. They order pizza, they play <laughs> some video games. They say, oh shit, it's really late. I need to go home and everything. Oh, uh, my mom is waiting for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the real reason is that um, 
uh, Nolan figured that Batman wouldn't be really like impressive to fight in the light. So he did that switch. But it's like a weird time frame. Okay. Basically eight hours pass in that tunnel. And I think it's best if we do the rest of the characters in the next episode. Okay. We're halfway there. So yeah. Let's see. We'll see the rest in the next.